Lesson uh, 92 from A Course in Miracles. So, miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. Uh, the idea for today is an extension of the previous one. You do not think of light in terms of strength and darkness in terms of weakness. That is because your idea of what seeing means is tied up with the body and its eyes and brain. Thus you believe that you can change what you see by putting little bits of glass before your eyes. This is among the many magical beliefs that come from the conviction uh, you are a body and the body, body's eyes can see. Now uh, this one uh, is, I just want to put my comment on this section of the Course in Miracles. Um, you know, thus, you know, okay, it's quite, quite a bit of stuff here. This is because uh, your idea of what seeing means is tied up with the, with the body and its eyes and the brain. So what the Course is sort of saying is that it's not, you know, if, you, if you're trying to sort of see with your beliefs and your brain and with your body and with the ego, um, you, what you'll be seeing through those filters, you see. Um, thus you believe that you can change what you see by putting lips of little... Now it's giving one of, the, one of the many magical beliefs that we have is now putting it under inspection. Uh, this reminds me of some of the other Course in Miracles, uh, Miracle lessons, where it talks about, you know, humans use, are often operating via magical beliefs. So we have what, some examples of magical beliefs like science. Science would be a magical belief. It would be like, if you pop this pill in your mouth, then you're going to get well. That's a magical belief. Or another magical belief which it's putting here is like, if you're having fuzzy vision, if you put some glasses on your, on your eyes, then the glasses will help you to be able to see. You know, so that would be, in terms of the course, a magical belief, just a belief. If I take this pill, put these glasses on, um, then, then another magical belief that the Course talks about is money. Uh, like if you have enough pieces of green paper in your wallet, that will keep you safe. And uh, th again, that would, the Course would call that an another mad one of the many magical beliefs that we hold within the collective of uh, humanity. So it's referring to those, and it, it's referring to it as magical is because the, you know, if, if, an, if, if the ego believes something, quite often it will happen. Like, um, if you believe that um, this pill will, if the doctor says this pill is going to cure you, it's 100% effective, you, take, you pop the pill in your mouth, often you are, like, cured. But the Course would call that a magical belief. It's, it's your belief in it that is creating that, that thing. But then... It's called a magical belief because it's actually not those things, it's just the belief, it's not the pill. It's not actually the pill that did it, but it was the belief. You know, it's a magical belief that you believe that pill from that doctor and that research would do it, that did it. Or that, the, you know, hence also that, oh, it's well known that if you put a piece of glasses, wear some glasses and you've got fuzzy eyesight, then your, your eyesight's improved. That would be a magical belief. But it's the belief in that that does it. So hence, Hence the, the thing, now I'd like to, now this also sounds quite fantastical, but you know, my, um, if I can just very, very briefly give a little recap of my story. I had um, kidney failure, uh, gout, asthma, when I got my kidney failure while working in the stock market. And um, I had a spiritual experience in the hospital bed, and then someone later on gave me a DVD of Dr. Hawkins, who was of many things, he was of course a miracles teacher. And he had had also profound spiritual experiences, and he had 23 illnesses. And I just want to quickly share this. He had 23 illnesses, and he was led to do spiritual work, and all of his illnesses left him by doing spiritual work. Actually, I'll just put one of them. All of these illnesses, as he did the Course in Miracles and other spiritual work, they all left him by spiritual means. And I'll just very, very quickly recap one of the things. He was a Course in Miracles teacher in the States. And he was saying, like, it's just magical beliefs. If you let go of the belief, you know, these, any, any, these things can be rectified. And he would let go of all of these illnesses. And one of the Course of, it was a Course of Miracles group. And one of the Course of Miracles students says, well, if you let go of all of these illnesses and all these magical things, 
but how comes you're still wearing glasses? That's a magical belief. So, you know, one of the students questioned him on that, you know, because he'd let go of all of these other illnesses just by letting go of the belief in them. Um, and then, uh, so he said, no, you're right. So he just um, decided that he was not going to use his glasses anymore. And he had, like, really, really bad eyesight. Um, so he said it would be up to God, you know, if he sees again or he doesn't see again, he'll just make do without them. And he let go of his glasses. And, uh, and he said, it's up to God. If I see or if I don't see, it's up, it's up to God. And uh, he was in Sedona. They have these rocky, red, rocky mountains. He was up in, in the mountains. So <laughs> it doesn't sound very good. But anyway, he was driving his car, and it was like he would get these intuitions of when to turn on these rocky mountain roads. And he, he didn't die. He was kind of alerted to that. And I think it took him about, I forget what it was, two weeks two weeks and he was having this fuzzy vision and then all of a sudden his eyesight came back in and that, that, was, that was released as he sort of surrendered that one to God. So it took two weeks of faith and then it did. And I myself will be doing, uh, we do in this group, cancelling of beliefs or God did not create it and so it's not real. But it's referring, you know, the Course is referring, all of this is magic just because you believe it. But actually this is all happening from belief. But if you let go of the beliefs, Actually, this is all happening out of, um, out, of, out of the light, shall we say. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway. <clears throat> I let go of three illnesses, you know, like I let go of, uh, had miracles with kidney failure, gout, asthma, and I was doing essentially lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, which says God, God did not create, so it's not real. So just by sort of saying God did not create asthma, and so it's not real. So I let go in my belief that such a thing as asthma actually exists. Or I can let go, God did not create fuzzy eyesight, you know, and so it's not real. So you, as you let go of these things, and then, you know, all the illnesses I, I did it on, they all left, all left me. Not by taking a pill or, or by doing things. I was taking pills, actually, but they all sort of, the, net, the need for them, you know, the need for the asthma inhalers of the gout medication was just stopped because I just got well as I did these lessons. So just carrying on with the lesson, you also believe that the body's brain can think. If you but understood the nature of thought, you could, but, you could but laugh at this insane idea. It is as if you thought you held the match that lights the sun and, give, and gives it all its warmth, or that you held the world within your hand, securely bound, until you let it go. Yet this is no more foolish than to believe that the body's eyes can see or the brain can think. So it is God's strength in you that is the light in which you see, as it is his mind with which you think. And for me this is just indicating that the, the great power out of which all of the manifest world is occurring is the light of God, you see. And then, uh, we, uh, so, even thoughts come out of, uh, out of the infinite light and all of, even the beliefs which are held within the collective and with each individual create things, but you know, the power and the light which is cr creating all of this is out of God's light. So his strength denies your weakness. It is your weakness that sees through the body's eyes, peering about in darkness to behold the likeness of itself. The small, the weak, the sickly and the dying, those in need, the helpless and afraid, the sad, the poor, the starving and the joyless, these are seen through the eyes that cannot see and cannot bless. Strength overlooks these things by seeing past appearances. It keeps its steady gaze upon the light that lies beyond them. It unites with light of which it is a part. It sees itself, it brings the light uh, it brings the light in which yourself appears. In darkness you perceive a self that is not there. Strength is the truth about you. Weakness is an idol falsely worshipped and adored that strength may be dispelled and darkness rule where God appointed that there should be light. Now, this little passage here, strength overlooks these things by seeing past appearances. You know, some of the course in let in Course in Miracles lessons talks about seeing your thoughts pass before you like on a conveyor belt and detaching from them. 
so that you start to get a recognition of a light beyond these, you know, beyond these thoughts. And for me, you know, the Course in Miracles tackles letting go of the ego, its absorption, and it, then its dark projections. The more you're absorbed in your thinking and in your body identifications and the thoughts, it's like the darker the world you're sort of stuck in. Uh, so, like in this lesson, the Course in Miracles is saying there is a light beyond your thoughts. There is a light beyond this world, which you can connect to. And if you're looking at an individual with your ego's eyes, you're framing it from I'm an individual looking at another individual, and me as an identity, body and thoughts is a real thing, and them as a body and thoughts is a real thing. And this is quite. This is now taking you to into a dark world. So by so by um, uh, okay, connecting to something which is the light in you and beyond them, you're starting to like try try to let go of this dark view so you can get a recognition of the truth. Okay, so strength comes from truth and shines with light. Its source has given it. Weakness reflects the darkness of its maker. It is sick and looks on sickness, which is like itself. Truth is a saviour and can only will for happiness and peace for everyone. It gives its strength to everyone who asks, in limitless supply. It sees that lack in anyone would be a lack in all. And so it gives its light that all may see and benefit as one. Its strength is shared that it may bring to all the miracle in which they will unite in purpose and forgiveness and in love. Weakness which looks in darkness cannot see a purpose in forgiveness and in love. It sees all others different from itself and nothing in the world that it would share. It judges and condemns but does not love. In darkness it remains to hide itself and dreams that it is strong and conquering, a victor over limitations that but, but grow in darkness to enormous size. Its fears and its attacks and it fears and it attacks and hates itself, and darkness covers everything it sees, leaving its dreams as fearful as itself. No miracles are here, but only hate. It separates itself from what it sees, while light and strength perceive themselves as one. The light of strength is not the light you see. It does not change and flicker and go out. It does not shift from night to day and back to darkness till morning comes again. This is what I was just referring to. Like beyond the, th beyond the thoughts or beyond your perceptions, there is a light. So, uh, the light of strength is constant, sure as love, forever glad to give itself away, because it cannot give but to itself. No one can ask in vain to share its sight, and none who enter its abode can leave without a miracle before his eyes, and strength and light abiding in his heart. The strength in you will offer you the light and guide you, seeing, seeing so, you do not dwell on the idle shadows that the body's eyes provide for self-deception. What you are looking for, yes, so you do not dwell on the idle shadows that the body's eyes provide for self-deception. I'm just re reminding you again of what St. Francis said, you know, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So if you're, if you're dwelling on the idle shadows that the body's eyes provide, if you're looking through your eyes and through your thoughts, then that will be what you're looking on is self-deception. So, like, either before your thoughts or the body is a light, or if you, tr if you recognize a light which is beyond your perceptions in what you're looking at, like if you're looking at a person, don't try and look through the body's eyes at that person, but try to connect to a light which is not through the perception of your ego and your thoughts. Is there a light or a stillness in this room which is not through the perceptions of your thoughts or the body? So strength and light unite in you and where they meet, yourself stands ready to embrace you as its own. Such is the meeting place we try today to find and rest in. For the peace of God is where yourself, his son, is waiting now 
to meet itself again and be as one. Now again, for me, with this, you know, when it has, um, uh, for the peace of God is where yourself, his son, is waiting now for, now to meet itself. You know, it has self with the capital S. So, uh, it has self with a capital S. And so that means uh, recognizing the, uh, the eternal self. So let us give 20 minutes twice today to join this meeting. Let yourself be brought unto yourself. Its strength will be the light in which the gift of sight is given you. Leave then the dark a little while today and we will practice seeing in the light, closing the body's eyes and asking truth to show us how to find the meeting place of self and self with a capital S where light and strength are one. Morning and evening we will practice thus. After the morning meeting, we will use the day in preparation for the time at night when we will meet again in trust. Let us repeat as often as we can the idea for today and recognize that we are being introduced to sight and led away from darkness to the light, which only miracles can be perceived. So that's lesson 92, and it's just really for me just referring, you know, giving the idea of how magical beliefs, especially in, in, in relationship to the ego's thoughts, you know, try not to think, try not to see with your mind and with your thoughts, with your ego mind and with your thoughts. So there is a strength, there is a light that can be connected to, as I was referring with St. Francis, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So if you're not looking, if you're not trying to look through the analysis and the ego thoughts that are going on in, in your mind right now, then there is a light, a stillness, a peace, a witnessing that is here. And it's also sort of saying, when you're looking at another individual, you know, don't look through your ego's eyes. Try to connect to the light beyond the individual. Okay. Let's this off. <laughs>